My Saturday hack project today was setting up Carabiner Elements, which is a keyboard. It says it's a keyboard customizer on this honestly pretty ugly web page. Essentially, what it allows you to do is program your keyboards to do anything you want. Okay, what do I use it for? Well, for example, I've set up a layer where I can quickly switch between applications I use pretty commonly. So when I press my, my, my hyper key, which I'm going to get to, and go into the O layer for open, then I can press, for example, V for VS Code, T for Terminal, G for uh, Google Chrome, etc., etc., And I can very quickly go to the app that I'm looking for right now. Another thing I add, I have is the window layer on W. So when I press hyper, when I go, when I press my hyper key and go into the window layer, I can then um, resize my windows pretty uh, efficiently. I usually use thirds of my ultra wide, which is why that's sort of the default. And then whenever I'm on my laptop, I usually want halves. So that's also easily possible. And of course, also full size everything. I have a movement key, which just adds arrow keys in my home row. So I can press H, J, K, L to go um, up, down, left, right. And I can also press M to trigger a magic move via home row dot app. Uh, and then I also have a system layer. So when I press hyper key and S, I go into the system layer. And then I have all kinds of various functionality like increasing volume, increasing, decreasing brightness, locking my screen, which I'm not going to do now. And then playing, which is on P, that this will play music. Now I'm just going to start Apple Music, which I don't want. Uh, and fast forward on the last key. So that's kind of the functionality I've built out. Now, obviously, this just makes me much more um, productive and I can sort of, without leaving my home row, without ever, without having to move my hands anywhere to do anything, I can accomplish a lot of common tasks. I, for example, can also, if I go to the window, I have like tab switching, um, so I can quickly switch between tabs. It's, it's, it's all kind of stuff, really. Any, anything you could round of want, I just got going. Now, Carabina is usually configured via this JSON file. You write a carabina.json file in your config directory, but the problem with it is in order to get just kind of these basic commands done, you would need these 940 lines of JSON. And a lot of it is very repetitive. It's like conditions with variables that you have to set um, and trigger based on certain things. The actions are kind of the same. Like it's just not a very nice data structure to work in. It's very uh, explicit, which is great uh, for debugging, but for writing it is absolutely terrible. And so instead of doing that, I created a TypeScript generator really that at the very bottom just kind of like if it's not right file syncs out the carabino.json and JSON that stringifies the entire configuration. Most of the configuration is pretty standard, but then where it really gets complex is the complex modifications and the rules for those, which is all of that custom functionality I just showed you. Now, the first thing I do here is I define the hyper key itself. What is a hyper key? So when I hold caps lock, when I, when I press caps lock once, it's escape, which is cool. When I hold caps lock, it acts as the hyper key. Now the hyper key is actually all four modifiers held at once. So when I'm holding down caps lock, it's as if I'm holding control, option, command, and shift at once. It's like, as if I was doing this, basically, holding all four of them at once, which obviously you normally would never do. So there's no keyboard shortcut for any of that, which is great. Now, usually what people do at that point is they have hyper key and then they do certain things when you press certain keys. So they will go like, okay, when I press hyper key G, I want to open Google Chrome. When I press hyper key T, I want to open my to-do list. When I press hyper key V, I want to open VS Code. When I press hyper key, I don't know, U, I want to increase volume, for example. I'm just making up examples here. The problem you very quickly run into that there is that there isn't a lot of keys that match the words that you're trying to use. For example, even just hyper T, which would open the terminal in the example I just gave, what if I also want to have, it, have something to open my to-do list? Now, I, I can't have to one hyper T, obviously, right? So I have to come up with something else and maybe I go with hyper L for the to-do list. That's kind of awkward. And then on top of that, you very quickly just ran out of space. And so what I did is I, instead of hyper key sub layers, and I have this like custom, I have a bunch of custom utility functions to very quickly create these. The specific implementation details here of Carabiner Elements doesn't matter. All of this, by the way, is uh, completely open source on GitHub at and makes this to be our slash carabina, so you can go look at that. But uh, the important thing is really, I create hyper key sub layers. And what that means is, for example, I have a sub layer for O, which is open applications. And so when I press hyper key and O, like I showed at the beginning, I can very quickly switch between common applications I use, which is really cool. And that, but that also means that hyper key O is essentially just opens up the entire space. Again, I can use any key in this hyper key O sub layer, right? Correspondingly, for example, when I have the W layer, which is window, again, all of my keys are completely open. And so I can, for example, press hyper key W O to go to the right half of the screen, even though O is already used for a sub layer up here. But this W sub layer is completely separate from this O sub layer. And so for every single key, I now basically have opened up a complete sub layer where I can use all of the keys again, and I run into much less issues having to um, redefine 
things. Same thing for system, S is system, like I said, and then V is movement. This is the only kind of awkward one with the naming. The, ad, the actual reason for this is because I wanted a key layer that lets me press H, J, K, L, like I can in Vim, um, to go left, down, up, right? I actually double check that because it just do it automatically. Um, but then if I were to put this on M for movement, right? I would press hyper key M, then I can't press H and J anymore, right? It's like very awkward. So the movement layer has to be on the left hand. And so I just, I chose V because that's the closest to movement that sticks out to me personally. So this was really my weekend hack project. Um, this kind of like, I also typed the whole thing. Of course, it's like a TypeScript. I created a custom TypeScript conf um, definition for, uh, Carabiner configuration, so this types basically the entire JSON file that I have. It's not exhaustive, it's, it just has the stuff that I need for my configuration. There's a lot more you can do with Carabiner that I currently kind of just like don't do. But this covers the basic types that I need and then all of it is typed, so if I make a mistake, I will immediately know in TypeScript. And then it generates, you know, this is like 220 lines of pretty maintainable TypeScript and then, you know, some utility functions which probably add a bit of space as well. So a grand total of 350 lines of pretty maintainable TypeScript that generate currently 940 lines of JSON that is almost, that, that will almost be unmaintainable in this state already, right? And I can just add things really quickly. Like say I install a new app, right? Um, that is called uh, whatever, uh, just coming up with an example. Can't come up with an example right now, um, but I can just add a new key here, go app um, list, just imagine there's a there's a there's a to do app called list. Open my terminal. Uh, the run generate usually if this actually running in watch mode, but I'm just going to generate once. And now if we go back over uh, to VS Code, is actually where I wanted to go. Um, and then go to the Carabino JSON. You'll see that there's a div here. And so when I look at this, it's now added to shell command open a list app description open list from this only if we're in the O sub layer. Like it's a lot of like stuff, but it's like one line of code, right? Like I I, I just wrote this and I generated. I don't know, probably 20 lines of JSON that make it work. So that's really convenient and really cool. And now I have this really fancy, uh, maybe a little bit over, over engineered, um, keyboard setup, um, that I can use to navigate around my Mac really, really efficiently. The really cool thing about Carabino elements is that it's, 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 it's sort of software running on Mac, which means no matter which keyboard I plug into my Mac, it's going to work. Previously, I have an ErgoDocs on my actual work disk and the ErgoDocs uses something called uh, QMK it, uh, to program its firmware. And you can program that firmware to do a lot of the same things that Car Carabiner Elements does, but that only works when I'm actually sitting at my desk using my ErgoDocs, but I travel a lot. And so I wanted the same functionality just always. And so I've actually removed a lot of the custom programming from the ErgoDocs and moved it to Carabiner Elements so that I can just use it consistently everywhere. And once my fingers are used to how to set the volume or the brightness, then it doesn't matter which keyboard I'm using or what I am, it's always going to be hyper key, system, I and K. No matter which keyboard I'm using, no matter where I am, it's always gonna be the same thing. That is my weekend hack project of setting up Carabiner Elements. Again, if you wanna learn more about this, go check out my Carabiner configuration. It's somewhat commented. I think if you haven't looked into Carabiner Elements, it might be a little bit confusing because the configuration language is mm, yeah, a little bit meh possibly, but it's good enough for me to use. And so you can take some inspiration from this and what I do. I'd love to hear, if you use something similar, I'd love to hear what you do with it, what else I could be doing, using this for, how I could make this more powerful, basically just the whole thing. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.